when we remember the body and the blood and we remember the cross and what Jesus accomplished with his body, it doesn't say try harder. It doesn't say do better. It, 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 because that's what religion does. I got to try harder and I got to white knuckle it. Man, I just, I'm struggling in this area and I just can't. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't. Walking with Jesus for a number of years and now decades, you just realize, man, without that sacrifice. Because at the beginning, I was good. I was good. Like, I got this. Christianity. Yeah, I got it. I mean, you're deceived. You think you got it. But like you're not what you used to be. You know, you go from this horrendous lifestyle, me, just sinful, going to hell. I mean, I knew I was deserving of hell. I knew it. Living for all the wrong things. And so when Jesus began to take away these desires for certain things, and I'm participating with him, I'm like, man, I got this. I got this Christianity thing. It's awesome. And then as you walk with the Lord, you begin to realize, I don't have this. I'm not good at this. This is hard. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. And then you, you begin to rely on this gracious God. And it humbles you. It humbles you. It breaks you. Because you're like, ah, I want to. I want to so hard. I've tried. I've tried harder. I got to be gooder. And you realize I can't. I tried in my own strength, in my own. I, I, I'm willing, but the flesh is weak. And as you walk with God season after season and you begin to look at some things that you're like, ah, we had this guy at work fired because he said something he wasn't supposed to say. And the parents heard it. And the kids, he was, he was addressing the baseball team. And I'm like, guys, if a camera followed me around all day, I would get fired 20 times a day. I say things I shouldn't say, and I do things I shouldn't do. And it's not because I'm callous to sin or I don't care. I care a lot. But we just don't have it within us. And so what Jesus does is something impressive on that day in the Last Supper. And he says, guys, if there's something that I want you to remember, I want you to remember what my body did for you. And I want you to remember what the blood did for you. And it removes your sin so that the father and in Isaiah, it's not that God forgives and forgets. Can God forgive? Get. Yes, he can forgive, but can God forget? It's impossible for God to forget, right? The word that the Bible uses in the book of Isaiah is God chooses to place your sin in a place where he no longer looks at it, in the cleft of his back. It's there. He's aware of what you and I stumble through in life, but he has chosen not to look at it. It's a conscious choice that he makes. And when you think about the body and the blood, I, I was thinking about our church. No superstars. No heroes here. We're just all in this thing called life together. We just try to figure it out. And we don't elevate a name. Calvary Chapel is not even the name. Jesus is the name, and that's the one we elevate.